Hello my lords and welcome to the finals of the winner bracket for the World Championship 2020. BFME 2 Rise of the Witch King. On the map Forts of Eisen, Elves against Isengard, AWHW against Mr. Smog, Turkey against Ukraine. Best of 9, the first best of 9 on this channel by the way, I have never ever done best of 9 before. And because it's the finals itself, I'm actually very excited about the outcome of this finals. And I really hope it's gonna be very close. And we hopefully and potentially gonna reach the game number 9. On the right side, we have the red Elven player Ave Havi from Turkey against the blue Isengards player Mr. Smog from Ukraine. Mr. Smog is also the world champion of 2019. And now, also this year, he manages to get to the finals of the winner bracket and has a really big chance of winning this year's world championship as well. Pretty nice. Two furnaces into the Uruk pit. We will have two Malon trees into the barracks. He was cancelling the barracks here, by the way. Maybe he wanna go for one more. No, he's gonna build the barracks now. I think he was not happy with the positioning. Open wise, we will have most likely rallying call from elves, and Warchan has been already picked by Mr. Smog. And by the way, guys, if you're watching that over at YouTube later on, please don't forget to leave a like on this video because likes on this videos helps a lot for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more content like this. This is not the first and it's not gonna be the last tournament we are hosting for Battle for Middle Earth games. So these channels, both Twitch and YouTube, are only and exclusively based on Battle for Middle Earth games. We will have Lorien Warriors first from the barracks. On the other side, we have Urukai coming very soon. Urukai against Lorien Warriors obviously is gonna favor the Urukai from Isengard because they are stronger uh, than Lorien Warriors. Obviously, they are also more expensive than Lorien Warriors. Okay, Rallying Call and Warchan are ready, and we will have three into the fort Malon tree here from Ave Ave, three furnaces into the fort furnace also from Mr. Smog. And indeed, the Urukai are moving forwards now, and the second battalion are gonna be those uh, crossbowmen from the Urukai, I mean Uruk pit. <laughs> Alrighty. Is this best of nine? Yes, this is best of nine. Okay. So we're gonna have potentially the first fight. I mean, it's gonna be now interesting to see if they're gonna fight against each other. It looks like uh, Lorien Warriors, they're gonna try to fight against the Urukai. And Mr. Smog was already using his war chant here. And Smoky is all about to ignore those Lorien Warriors and is gonna try to take down exclusively those resource buildings. And indeed, uh, they should be able to take it down. But Smok, uh, actually, Ave Havi is gonna use the rallying call defensively on these two battalions of Lorien Warriors, and he's gonna move with one of them forward. But the other one shouldn't be able to handle those Urukai, they are level 2 now. That's why he needs to play very defensively. And Smog is not gonna be only able to take down the Smalon tree, but also he's gonna be able to kill a bunch of Lorien Warriors. And the Urukai are leveling up quite fast. And you can even see that. Even in a 1v2 situation, Urukai are just so much stronger than those Lorien Warriors. And during all this time, we are getting more and more units on the field from the player from Ukraine, from the World Champion 2019. Will he manage to take down the second? Yes, he will! And Ave Ave actually losing a lot here, without being able to take anything down from Mr. Smog, who is all about to creep the war player at the left side of the river. Pretty nice. Okay, 300 command points for Elves, and we have 400 command points obviously for Isengard, because he didn't lose anything just yet. And uh, Ave Ave might be forced to play you know, much more defensively now because the next attack from Isengard will be hitting, like you know, as a truck. And because he's gathering now, you know, a lot of units, he has crossbowmen, two battalions and one pikeman level 2. He might also go for the second creep here, which would be the safer way. And I would say the best way of Smoky handling the current situation is to wait for the next war chant. Imperialist is coming in clutch with the rate of 8. Impy, thank you so much for the rate. I, ho I hope you had a great stream, my friend. And uh, Emperor K, thank you so much for the follow as well. Welcome to this stream. Hope you're going to enjoy your stay. Okay, guys, so 350 command points for Elves, 400 command points for Isengard. But Isengard is getting a lot of creeps done here. That's the second war creep against zero so far. Okay, Lorien Warriors, they were able to get to the side of Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog should be demolishing that immediately, and that's gonna be also the case. The reason for the demolish is obviously to deny the experience and also the power points from your opponent. 
The builder from Ave Havi might be in trouble. He was barely able to get away, and as he is as fast as Urukai, he won't be. I mean, Isengard's player won't be able to catch him and take him down. But look, the army from Smoky here. He has a lot of units on the field, and I'm just assuming he's waiting for the next Warchant, which should be ready within the next. Oh, there it comes! The greatest counter to the Elvin army, ladies and gentlemen, and his name is Sharku, is already joining the battlefield. Ayakos, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Okay, Smog has now a lot of units, and you know, including the Sharku, the war hero from Isengard on the field. Uh, against no hero so far from the Elvin player who be was building a statue for defensive purposes, and he might be forced to actually fight around this area. Because Smog has so many units on the field now. Look at this. He has enough units for the front line, Urukai and Pikemen, they are tanky enough to absorb a lot of damage. Especially the pikemen in the porcupine formation. And you will need the double buff action here to deal with the army. And nice positioning here from Ave Ave. It looks like Smog doesn't want to overcommit, which makes sense because in this area, the elven army will be much, much harder to take down. And we need to always keep an eye on the war hero Sharku. Because as he manages to get into the backline, we have seen him doing a lot of damage. And Ave Ave has to respect that. With the pikemen, he needs to be around the archers to keep them alive. But now he actually doesn't fight around this area and Isengard player might be able to win the fight. Because all he needs to do is really to take down those pikemen. Then Sharku can approach and wipe out the entire elven army. Oh my god, I'm always so excited when this guy dives in because with one strike he might, he might be able to take down multiple archers. Holy quacamole. Level 3.5 unlocked already, the Malone tree is gonna get bursted down. And the Kribin, by the way, is gonna nullify the leadership from the statue in the back. And on top of that, it's gonna debuff the enemy units. The pikemen are dying very fast though. Um, he's saying it's a bit sad that one Urukai kills two swords in the chat. So uh, he was very surprised about that. I think the plan from Ave Havi was to buff those two units, leave one of them to deal with the Urukai and the second one for a push. But since the Urukai was able to kill both the Lorien warriors with the Rallying Call buff, he was not able to deal any count, any kind of counter damage. Sharku is almost level 4. The Lorien warriors are trying to get away, but there is no escape from the Warcriders now. They have leadership also from Sharku and a potential double buff with the whole ability, which is now on cooldown. Rebeen is gonna be taken down, but it's gonna be gone very soon anyway. And, uh, you know, Elven player is kinda behind, but has still managed to collect 575 command points, has double barracks on the field and even a stable now. He has to build some sustain and the well is coming up. On the other side we have 550 command points, 5 power points collected. The second Uruk pit is building up, he has 2 furnaces level 2, the third one is all about to hit level 2 as well. And he has a bunch of units on the field, very strong army with the double buff, I mean buff and debuff. That can nullify the leadership from the statue for example or from Hydeer's lead leadership later on when he gets on the field. And Sharku is the one man army we have seen him. Turning the tides very, very fast and all by himself. Nisengard has the upper hand. He was also able to kill all these Malone trees at the bottom side, making sure that Ave Ave doesn't have any resource income. And indeed, Ave has only the Malone trees around his own fortress. He has still a couple of units on the field, but again, I don't think it's gonna be enough to deal with the Isengard army now, especially because there is no statue up on the field for the leadership part. Warchan was used a little bit earlier, that's why Rallying Call is still on cooldown. That means the units from Elven player are not buffed in this current situation. Nisengard can demolish everything within a second and a half. And everything is falling indeed apart. Look the power point advantage from Smog. Yes, Kribane, Warchan and 8 power points and Elven player has just 5 power points collected after the Rallying Call. He's so much ahead in the game number 1. And Sharku hitting level 5, nice trample with the Warcriders. Even if he loses them, it doesn't matter really at all, because he has such a big advantage in this current situation. Ave might be able to defend this attack, but he has not the sustain in terms of eco, and his resource income is looking very bad in the game number one, as Isengard's player has Sharku and is shining bright like a diamond. 425 command points against 675, the Vestation has been used before, so he's gonna get a lot of money now. Potentially gonna get Lourdes on the field very soon. 
for the second hero against no hero so far from the Elven player. He can't afford it. Because he keeps losing units all the time, he needs to actually keep spamming units all the time from double barracks and a stable. And I don't know about the Lancers in this current situation. They might be great if you are able to kind of snipe down the, the pikemen before the fight really starts with your archers and then you can go for a trample potentially. But remember, Sharku is not only great against clumped archers, but he's also a great counter to the Revendal Lancers from the Elven player Avia Havi. 475 against 675. Ave Ave is still in the game. He is not defeated just yet, but it's not looking very great for him either. So the Kribane is being used for the debuff. Ave has his buff on cooldown. Heal is on cooldown. 5 power points almost collected afterwards. Still 5 power points away from getting the inch rotting mist, which should be very much needed in this current situation. Nice trample into the backline, though, I need to say. We have also Lourdes now on the field, by the way. Here we go. That's the invest investment of the of the uh, Devastation power point ability from the Spellbook of Isengard. Six and a half power points collected now. And we have three and a half after Devastation, Vorgen and Kribane. So Isengard is dominating the fight, dominating the game in terms of power points and command points. But we have seen Elves being able to win those fights, defend long enough to stall for stronger units, for stronger heroes. But Isengard player knows, and that's what I'm trying to say all the time, when you are behind against good and experienced players, one time they know how to snowball their lead, they know how to close the games, and they know how to deny you any kind of experience, power points and resources. Nice trample here one more time. Charku and, the, and his Warcriders, the Fortress is getting demolished, the game is over for the Turkish player Ave Havi and the score after the game number 1 will be 1-0 for Mr. Smog, our World Champion 2019 is also shining bright like a diamond in the WCS 2020. And we're gonna jump right into the game number 2. And the game number 2 is beginning now, once again the El Clasico matchup, Elves against Isengard, they are picking the same factions also for the game number 2 on Sakura Forest 2. Let's get it started. And Ave Ave has to play a little bit more careful now, because the start of the game number 1 was actually very bad for him, he was losing 2 Lorien Warriors and 2 Malone Trees without being able to take down anything from Mr. Smug. So, and again. When your early game is kind of messed up too much, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to come back from. And against experience and great players of Rise of the Witch King, you don't wanna fall behind. At the bottom right side, we have the winner of the first game, the Blue Isengard player Mr. Smok from Ukraine, against the Elven player, the Red Elven player Ave Havi from Turkey. Uh, Rallying Colin Vorchan is gonna be picked once again. And we might see once again Uruk Pit start or you know Work Pit or even Clan Steading now because in Clan Steading got actually buffed. But he's gonna go for the Uruk Pit start. Because never change a running system. Why would you change the system which was working quite nicely in the previous game? And the first push of Urukai was a big factor of winning the first game for Smoky. That's why he's gonna potentially try it once again. On the other side, we see two Malon Trees barracks into the third Malon Tree. And this time, Elven player might maybe go for the Lorien Warriors into Archers instead of going for one more. Because he has actually, he's gonna go for the Pikeman and he might go for the Creep now. He might go for the Creep here on the left side or on this side of the map. Uh, pretty nice and easy to take down, especially this one. Should not be getting contested at all. Same here for Isengard's player. And Smok is gonna start with Urukai once again and yeah, that's gonna be his plan. He's gonna go for offensive push immediately. Alrighty, the score, yeah, the score, I didn't upload, uh, update the score, guys, my bad, so Smok is, of uh, of course, leading the series 1-0, thank you for letting me know, and thank you for paying attention, the scoreboard is now up to date, okay, Urukai are joining the battlefield, crossbow and next from Mr. Smok, and Ave Havi is gonna go for the Vorklinger at the left side, and his second unit are gonna be those Lorien warriors once again, and this might not be the best choice, because I can, uh, I can understand what uh, Ave Havi is planning to do. He wanna creep this war player, get level 2 with the pikemen, and group the pikemen later on with the Lorien warriors and go for the first attack with Rallying Call. That's the plan of Ave Havi. But he doesn't calculate the push of the Urukai 
and we have seen them already handling two Lorien warriors and still managing to take down two Malon trees. And they might be able to do that once again. He's gonna go for the Lorien arches now. But this time it's not the end of the world if he only loses one Malon tree. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because, oh, what? Actually, baiting, okay? <laughs> he was going this way, baiting Ave Ave. And then actually turning to take down this Malon tree in, bet in between this double barracks. He's also getting a lot of vision here. Because of the Urukai and the Malon tree is gonna get bursted down. Ave Ave is not using his buff defensively. He might be waiting for the Lorien Arches and use it now. If he doesn't use it, the Lorien uh, Warriors are gonna die. Very quiet, again, very quickly. Just use hold crown stands in this current situation. They're gonna hit level 2 now. But this time, Smoky is not gonna be able to take down the Lorien Warriors and also not the Lorien Archers. He was only able to take down one Malon tree, but it's not the end of the world for Ave Have, like I said before, because he was able to creep and getting some tr treasure from the creep and Im immediately moving to the second creep at the left side of the river. It's gonna help him quite a lot. And he might be able to get many more units on the field. But the second attack from Smok is gonna happen now. Urukai and Crossbowman this time. Those Lorien Arches are still buffed. But they will deal a lot of damage to the Urukai. That's why Smok is immediately switching to the whole ground stance to minimize the damage income. And Ave Have will be able to secure the second creep and also the treasure from the second work layer. Uh, the transition into the clan setting has been made already, but he's not going to make some Wildman of Dunland. He's actually gonna make the transition immediately to the level 2 for the extroverse. And that's gonna be the first time Ave Have is going for a counter attack. And this game is looking already much, much better for the Turkish player than the previous one. Because in the previous game, he actually was never able to reach the side of Mr. Smog on the map for of Eisen. 400 command points for elves and 350 command points for Mr. Smog. Smog has some units for defensive purposes. Let's see how effective this is going to be. We have a fight here between Pikeman and Lorien Warriors against Urukai. He's using Shield Wall plus the Hold Ground Stance being very tanky. Lorien Warriors are actually able to handle those Urukai this time with the Pikeman, especially because the Pikeman is almost level 3. It's a nice positioning here around the trees. That's the Elvin passive, so they are getting stealthed around this area, as you can see. And Rallying Coal is on cooldown, obviously. It's gonna be longer on cooldown than the Warchant. And I agree with Solas in the chat. Maybe he was he should be trying to you you know to, to defend himself without the use of the Rallying Coal. Um, but he was able to deal with the Urukai here and will be able to get away with both these units. They are also both level 2, so they will have the self-regeneration. And he's getting more and more units from the double barracks. And actually he has 500 command points now against Mr. Smog's 400 command points for now. What you can do in this map is you can build a statue here at the river. And try to stall. Try to build yourself an outpost, a small outpost maybe. And then you can try to defend this area and defend this pathway. But for now, because he has so many arches on the field, he might be able to defend himself anyway. Warchan is available, should be available very very soon, it's available now. Uh, and Smok is kinda going to use it. Okay. Now the Alvin player has to retreat and this extroverts in the backside are actually doing a great job dealing decent amount of damage to the archers. And Ave Havi is building a well now to regenerate those units faster. He needs to give up this Malon tree and that's why he's gonna demolish it immediately. 450 command points now for both the players. And for the next attack, Kribane is gonna be ready as well, which is gonna make the enemy units weaker and nullify the leadership, which is not existing right now, and he's gonna use it immediately. Rallying Call is being used now for defensive purposes, but Isengard army should be technically stronger, because they are still buffed from the Warchan and they are debuffing the enemy units on top of that. The builder from Ave Havi will be taken down, of course. Crossbowmen and Extroverts are dealing tons of damage. Um, and you can't even ignore those extroverts at, by all means, because unlike Crossbowmen, they are also dealing significant amounts of damage to the structures. But now the Lancers are coming and there are no pikemen. Nice trample here. Need to be careful with the trample, you don't want to be stuck in between. Heal is available, he might be using it now on these units and he will be using it immediately. One more trample. And this attack should be protected. He was also able to keep this Malon tree alive, but he lost a builder. He lost a Malon tree here and he lost a well. So he still lost quite a lot. And once again, during all this time, Smok is not being really touched. He might lose this furnace here, which is only level 1 without any experience. And Smok was actually about to creep the Vorklay at the right side, but he 
got interrupted and now he's gonna finish it off anyway with the extra over Steve, but also hit level 2 after finishing the work cleaner. And he spams now many extra overs, they are quite cost efficient, they cost only 250 each. But the Lancers are gonna force Mr. Smog to make multiple pikemen, otherwise his Wildman of Dunland, but also his Wildman extra overs and Urukai are gonna get trampled down all the time. The Malone tree is getting demolished by Smoky, and you need to pay always attention around this kind of things. Because both players are making sure to demolish the structures fast enough, so this way the opponent player is not gonna get a lot of power points for free. That's why um, they are not having too much power points collected, so 3 power points almost after heal and rallying call, 500 command points available for elves, 525 for Mr. Smog, and he has also collected 5 power points, actually he's still ahead in this game number 2, he has 3 more power points almost collected, okay 2.5 power points more collected than Ave Ave has, and that's why he might potentially be able once again to go for Sharku, and indeed Sharku is always gonna be on the field now in these matchups against Elves from Mr. Smug. And once he has the Vestition, he is only 4 power points away from that. He might be using this money once again for uh, to get uh, Lourdes on the field. One of the Lancer battalions has been taken down. Oh boy, okay, he's going back to... Oh, that was... They were perfectly lined up for Sharku, but the pikemen are coming in just in time. And now the Alvin player might go for a counter attack. No heroes from Ave Have it just yet, and he also needs to make sure to expand around the bottom side. You can see there are no Malone trees at all. And same around the top right side. The both players are expanding quite safely, and they are not going for a risky Malone tree. Warchan is being used, and now is the perfect time to just disengage. If you, if you can do that, just run for your life <laughs> and try to build yourself a buff advantage, maybe. Because Smog was using Warchan quite early. With that being said, by the time he reaches this area, his buff is gonna be almost gone. But we need to always keep an eye on Sharku. But Sharku also has to be very careful because there are some pikemen on the field, but the Lancers are diving in too much too early and are getting taken down. Luna, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Okay, archers are now being buffed from the rallying call. Heal is on cooldown, still he has 5 power points collected, can go for the foresight, but I'm assuming he's gonna try to save for the mist. I think that's the only possible way you can win on dominate those fights. Because if you don't have the mist, Isengard will have stronger units on the field. He will have buff and debuff all the time. And that's why mist is very very important and we see almost in every elven gameplay, once collected 10 power points, they are going like 99% of the time for the mist. Okay? Elven players forced to retreat once again, but the buff is already gone, and those Elven units, they are still buffed. Sharku um, is quite healthy still, but he doesn't want to risk the biscuit. Because Sharku, as effective as he is against archers, he is like a glass cannon against the pikemen. Oh, but the pikemen are not in position, ladies and gentlemen! Oh, that's gonna be Fiesta now! This guy is doing incredible amounts of damage. And Ave Ave has to play very carefully. And has to make a lot of pikemen to just counter Sharku. Because that's the only reason why he has pikemen now. There is no work pit, there are no work packs or no work riders at all. That's the only reason why he is forced to make multiple pikemen. And if this is the only thing you can achieve, it is still a worth investment for Sharku. Because if nothing else, you will still force your opponent to make multiple pikemen only to deal with your Sharku. And you can still be mobile, you can chase down the enemy lancers, you can actually go for harassment, you can try to take down Malon trees. So even if you don't manage to take down multiple archers, I think Charku is always worth the investment. He's also quite cost efficient as we know. The devastation has been already used, and I think he's going for Lourdes now. And uh, no transition being made, Uruk Pit only one, and Clan setting level 2 only one. But he manages to win those fights regardless. We have some Lorien warriors and pikemen moving through the top side. They will be able to see this furnace here. The builder might be in trouble if Smok is not paying attention. And Smok is actually spamming a lot of extra overs all the time. And didn't go for a single Wildman of Dunland just yet. Oh, that's a nice attack from Avi Havi. If he takes down this level 2 furnace, almost level 3 by the way, that's gonna reduce the command points of Smok to 525 now. Pretty nice. The furnace here has been uh, demolished. The builder was able to get away though. And the pikemen, I mean, Smok is just giving up too many power points now for no reason. The pikemen are dying in a second and a half, there are just too many archers to deal with. And with that being said, Ave Havi actually went for the foresight, okay. 
If he wouldn't, he would have enough power points for the mist. The Warchan is incoming now. Sharku is around the top right side, was able to take down one of those Malon trees. This Malon tree, one of the more important ones, level 2, is going to be taken down. The one in the back side is almost level 3, and so is this one here. He might lose both of these, by the way, because the attack still continues and he has still so many units on the field. Remain is on cooldown, that's why it can't be used on the units. So they have right now double buff, and you can see and tell yourself that Elven player is playing very defensively with his main army and just using a couple of units for harassment. But this might be a great situation for AWH regardless, because if he keeps defending himself all the time and doesn't lose too much, especially doesn't lose too many units, he might go for a massive counter-attack which will be very hard for the Isengard player to defend. But Eisen has now two heroes on the field, Lurtz level 1 and Sharku level 4. 9 power points almost collected after the devastation, 550 command points now against 535, 9 power points collected after heal, rallying call and foresight. So Isengard player is definitely ahead because now he can go for the 15 after the devastation which can be fuel the fires for example and I think that's the milestone, you can always go for the, for the Wildman of Dunland as well. But I think the milestone from Isengard not having any resource issue is, is the fact is the time when you get enough power points for devastation and fuel the fires. And once you have this milestone reached, I think you should never ever run out of resources, you know, unless you will lose every single lumber mill. Charku! Okay, nice trample regardless. This guy is playing very safe and very carefully, but also very smart at the same time with his Charku. He knows I need to keep him alive. He knows as long as he is alive, Ave Have has to make multiple pikemen. Indeed, look, he has four battalions of pikemen just to deal with the work hero Sharku. Kribane is gonna be ready, but we have also Mirkwood archers now, or that's gonna change the tide. The strongest archers in the game, ladies and gentlemen. And they are even gonna deal massive amounts of damage, but Sharku! Oh, okay, he might be in trouble here. Oh, Wildman of Dunland on top of the... Oh, but the Lancers are coming just in time. Warchan is still on cooldown. Fiesta fight. Sharku is gonna be taken down with the last hit of the Mirkwoods. Fiesta is happening, Lourdes is leveling up, and Tom Bombadil will be chosen and summoned. Boo! Yeah, what a beautiful Sonic song from the, from the young Turkish player here. Knocking down everything and dominating this fight. Not only that, but also taking down the nightmare hero from Ave Ave, Sharku. And Tom Bombadil was coming in clutch, otherwise I would say go for a mist, but he went for the Tom Bombadil summon. And Tom Bombadil was definitely a very important and strong choice here in this current situation and now Ave Ave is gonna go for a counter attack let's see power point wise he has three power points collected after Tom Bombadil 635 command points available for Ave Ave 550 command points available for the Isengard player Mr. Smok but he needs to now invest some of these resources into making some of these defensive expansions around the fortress the builder but also the furnace has been taken down we have some units around this area, Extrovers were able to reach, but we are getting more and more Mirkwoods, and I think uh, Smog has to get some counter units to them, because he needs to change now his strategy. He needs to stop making Extrovers, he needs to make some Warcriders, indeed, yeah. Maybe try to get Saruman on the field, because at this point, when Ave Have, I mean, he has a great amount of resource income. Um, this is looking not bad for Ave Have at all, and he will get eventually more and more Mirkwoods on the field, and with only extrovers and crossbow men, you won't be able to win those fights anymore. Especially if he still goes for the mist. I mean, going for the mist in this current situation is, double, is a double-edged sword. So if you go for the mist, it's gonna delay your 15 power point from the spellbook. But you might be able to dominate those fights even harder. You might be able to debuff the war riders and even actually one-shot them before they can reach out to you. And debuff the enemy units because Lourdes might hit level 5. Then they will have leadership, they will have buff from the Warchan, and they will have debuff from the Kribane. So it's gonna be a very great situation for Isengard. But if you try to save for 15, you might be, you know, end up losing the fights. Let's see what he's gonna choose. Maybe end summon for, with 15 going for the Siege. That might be always a possibility as well. The Builder has to be careful. And will be, unfortunately for Ave Havi, taken down. That's the second Builder, he loses this game. Isengard going for the attack, it looks like Elvin player has to react. Because the good 
Part for Isengard player Mr. Smog is the fact that this army has much more devastation power than this army has in terms of taking down the enemy resource buildings and also production buildings. That's a great attack from the player from Ukraine. He was able to take down the Malone Tree, the Builder and also the Stable is gonna be taken down. But now the Alvin army arrives and Lourdes is level 2 only and he's left alone. Yeah, he might be able to use the Carnage, but he's left alone here, he needs to run now without losing any more health. Vulnera, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Okay, we have also a, a Builder. Okay, I was thinking it's a hero, but it's a Builder. I mean, Builders are technically also heroes. Sharku is back in the business. Just coming out of the fortress. We have 8 power points collected, 645. Look the money from Elven player. He might go for Elrond at this point, maybe. Elrond is a great choice for the leadership part. And uh, because he went, he didn't went for Haldir, but he's building an Ant mood. He might also just go for Ants instead of any hero. I feel like Elrond might be a great choice because he will give you constant leadership. He is also great in you know by taking down the enemy structures. Lords might be in trouble here. Foresight is gonna be used. He has to stop to deal with the Lancers. If he doesn't stop, he's gonna die anyway. Because the archers have more range now with the Foresight. And Lourdes has been taken down. Now, after taking down Lourdes, he has almost collected 10 power points. Again, he might go for a mist. Still, that's always a viable option. At this point, he doesn't really need to go for the ants anymore. Because he's gonna have ants coming from the ant mood. He has almost 700 command points collected. And Mr. Smock has 500 only. Sharku is level 5.5. Mr. Uzi1, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. And Yodark TM, thank you so much for the follow as well. Hope you're gonna enjoy. Okay, we have a lot of Mirkwoods on the field, boys. And yeah, let's see what's gonna happen now. Sharku might still be a nightmare to deal with, but now we have Saruman on the field. Okay. So when this guy gets a beautiful Wizard Blast. I mean, are you guys believing in shenanigans? Because I personally do, and I have seen many, many times, actually, Saruman turning the fight. Once he gets level uh, 2 with the fireball from a safe distance, and Isengard has now almost every single hero on the field besides a Wormtongue. He has collected 6 power points after Devastation and Wildman. He also went for the Vision of Palanty, Warchand and Kribane. An Elven player has almost 10 power points after Foresight, Rallying Call, Heal and Tom Bomba deal. But the Mirkwoods are hitting like an absolute truck and even Saruman is forced to retreat. And they are not even buffed from the Rallying Call just yet. Imagine when they are buffed. I mean, the Builder is getting sniped down, but again, he needs to just wait here. He wanna just wait in front of the Uruk pit and snipe down the enemy units the second they are coming out. He has 10 power points collected now. The pikemen are dying within a second, they have no chance. But, you know, there is no chance also for the Alvin player to take down the barracks and the level 3 furnace here with only one pikeman. He will need ages because archers are dealing basically zero damage to the structures. Okay, we have some small fights here, he's spamming a lot of pikemen, some mirkwoods were able to survive, they are only level 1. He might go for the armory later on for the silvertone arrows. Which is gonna increase the damage output, especially from those Mirkwoods, significantly. 11 power points, and yeah, I'm assuming he's saving for 15, which can be the Eagle Summon. Or the End Summon. Saruman is diving in. Okay, guys, we need to keep an eye on this. Ooh! Oh, he's, he's actually trying to disengage, but he hits level 2 regardless. Tom Bombadil will be summoned. The fight of Wizard Fireball is coming in clutch. Fiesta fight is happening. Everything is actually falling apart here. But I think the Alvin player is still dominating this fight. The thing with Saruman is the fact once he is level... Uh, once he uses the abilities and he has done that already, he's kind of useless now. I mean, he can still basic attack you, but it's not very effective. Now he needs to run for his life, he might be even in trouble, because the Wildman of Dunland has been taken down, now he has 17 power points collected and Saruman might die as well. Saruman is pressing S to actually, you know, he's not very squishy, but he's gonna die regardless, almost 18 power points collected now, Sharku is still fighting. He's gonna hit level 7 very soon, which is gonna unlock the Man Eater, so he can regenerate and get 100% increased armor. We have Tribute himself on the field. 18 power points collected by Avi Havi, 860 command points against 575. Saruman has been taken down. 
Sharku was just using the Man Eater. Ooh. But he's diving in. There are no pikemen protecting those midfoods right now. If he attacks them one time here, one time here. Imagine, imagine. But he needs to be careful. The midfoods are still dealing incredible amount of damage to him, actually. Even though he's almost level 8. And for now, he will be forced to retreat. Lourdes is back on the field, boys. Tribute has to be careful. There are some Ballista expansions around the fortress. And Eagle Summon is gonna be ready for the next big fight. He might even use it now. And try to commit on the fortress. But remember, there are some level 3 structures around the fortress and even a level 3 work pit which is going to be able to shoot down the eagles. And the flyers are in general weak against extroverse, so he might be able to burst down the eagles very very fast. Eagles are coming indeed. Let's see how fast they're going to go down. Ooh, Sharku is actually YOLOing it, kind of diving in. His level 8 will be there. Oh, he's going to not survive that, right? That's going to be very close. Do you see that actually? What the, He was... Look, what the, what is this? He's carrying one of these Lorian archers with him. What is this, boys? Fiesta. One of the eagles is gonna go down now, potentially. Both of them are very, very low. And this guy is still wearing a <laughs> archer with him. Ballista expansion is gonna be taken now, but the eagles are gunners now. We have two ends now, three beards and also one of the normal ends. Flex, Magical Pony, thank you so much for the polo and welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. He's also being able to protect himself all the time, keep those Malone trees alive. The siege has begun, the fortress is gonna go down. Charku is still alive, but he's very, very low. Can't really approach his army at this point. He has nothing to take down those ants. Maybe Lourdes can with the carnage. Carnage is being used, he's diving in. Let's see how quickly he's gonna die to the midwood archers. Tribute is paying attention, he's gonna run. Can't touch me. Why are you chasing me? Why are you running? Why are you running? But he's running for his life. Dancing around Rosie. And the game will be over and Mr. Smog has been defeated. This time, the score is gonna be 1-1 and that's what I was expecting from the finals, boys. It's gonna be close and not one-sided at all. So everyone who was betting on Ave Have, congratulations, boys, you get your points. And we're gonna jump into the first tiebreaker in the best of nine series. All right, the game number three, this time with different factions. We will have Isengard from Ave Have for the first time and Mr. Smog is picking goblins, actually. On the map, Ethan Morris edit in the first tiebreaker game. Let's get it started. And yeah, remember, Ave Have had to pick first, so he was picking Isengard, and in order to counter the Isengard faction, Mr. Smog went for the goblins. But I don't even know if this is a great counter or not, but we shall see. On the right side, we have the blue goblin player, Mr. Smog, against the red Isengard player, Ave Have was having a great performance in the game number 2 on the map Sakura Forest 2. Two tunnels coming up for the world champion 2019 and the challenger Ave Have is building two furnaces. All point wise, Isengard might go for the Krivain, he might go for the Warchan, let's see what he's gonna choose. But he's gonna build a clan setting and that's what I mean, that's what we're gonna see more and more often now in the version 8.4. Because the clan setting now costs 100 less resources. On the other side, Smokey is gonna build a spider pit. We're gonna have spiderlings against Wildman of Dunland, which should be a great fight for the goblins. I think Smokey is gonna still go for multiple goblin caves afterwards. But we shall see. Okay. Uh, Sauron, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. Okay, spiderlings are on their way. And the clan setting is... Actually, not even up just yet. So the Spiderlings, they're gonna reach the other side of the map before the Wildmans are gonna make it to this side. And I am almost certain that the Spiderlings, they should be able to win the 1v1 skirmishes. They have also Warchan available, and I'm assuming Ave Have might go also for the Warchan. Because, I mean, we have seen Isengard players going for the Krimin much more often lately, even when they start with a clan setting or Uruk Pit. Um, before, I had the feeling that, you know, the Kribin was always a pick when you were starting with the War Pit. Wonky, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay, guys. Thank you so much for being here, by the way. Appreciate that. Means a lot to me. Okay, Spiderlings are diving in, boys. Let's see how much damage they're gonna be able to deal. The Wildman are going back. They might be able to burst down this furnace once he's using the Warchan and the damage output you can see yourself is actually crazy. And that's interesting, he was actually going for the vision of Palantir. Really? 
That's interesting. I don't know why. I've never seen this actually before. And I think Ali Harvey is made a mistake because he's saying OMG in the chat. Which is a short form for oh my god, you know. I think he's regretting now his choice of a vision of Palantir. Um, and again, this, I mean, Avi Havi is from Battle for Middle Earth 2. He's saying I'm trolling. Um, and in Battle for Middle Earth 2, you are starting with actually a vision of Palantir. But this is Rise of the Witch King. He might have forgotten this for like a second. I don't know about that, brothers. That's random for me. Okay, um, the Wildmen of Dunland are going to be taken down and he's going to lose multiple furnaces. That's the f furnace number three and also his last furnace remaining on the field. This might be the last, this might, this might be the fastest game and actually in this uh, best of nine series. Hey, Wonky, thank you so much for the follow and right after for the prime. Appreciate that. The game is over. The fastest game ever, actually. The Maxi, thank you so much for the follow and Wonky, man, appreciate the prime sub. Means a lot. Uh, what a questionable, interesting, <laughs> and laughable game. I think we need one of these at least in one, one best of nine series. And we're gonna jump right into the game number four, boys. Let's get to game number four. It started this time on the map, Plains of Linden. Isengard against Elves, but this time... Avi Avi on Isengard and Smoky on Elves. Let's go. Um, yeah, we have seen two times in a row Ave Havi picking the Elven faction against Mr. Smog's Isengard. Now they are switching the factions. And we have this time the Red Isengard player Ave Havi from Turkey against the Blue Elven player Mr. Smog from Ukraine. The score is 2-1 for Mr. Smog. But it's a best of 9 series, so you need to win 5 games in order to advance to the Grand Finals. Again, the player who reaches the Grand Finals of the WCS has at least secured $120 and also has a great chance and a greater chance than everyone else to win the cash prize of $320 because the winner of this series would be undefeated and even if he loses the Grand Finals once, one time, he has still the chance to fight one more time for the Grand Prize of $320, boys. Two Malone trees into the barracks into the third Malone tree. We have two furnaces, Uruk pit into the third furnace. A rallying call has been picked, and I think Isengard's player gonna go for the a war chant. I'm assuming he's gonna start with Urukai, but we shall see. Um, now he's gonna go for the for the pikeman and he wants to go for the creep first. Because he's gonna use the Beeldom to lure the troll away from the lair. And then he's gonna take down the creep first. So unlike Mr. Smog, who was always going for attack with the first Urukai, Ave Have is gonna play more like a utility style. He wants the creep, he wants to get this in under his control potentially, which is gonna work like a second barracks, and in from this structure he will be able to make the black orcs. Elven faction, if he will be ever capturing this in, will get the chance to make the peasants. And the peasants got buffed during the patch 8.4. Now the Rohirrim shield will cost only half the price. It was, you know, costing like 100, if I'm not mistaken, or 120. Now it will cost only 60 or 50. He's gonna use the builder to lure the troll away now. And the pikemen are gonna be able to finish him off without basically taking any kind of damage. Hopefully, at least for him. But Lorien Warriors are, are actually already here. And they might be able to steal the creep from the pikemen. Let's see if this is gonna be the case, but we have Urukai now joining the battlefield as well. Rallying Call is gonna be used. And Ave Have will be losing those pikemen very, very fast. I think he wanna just stall around to just buy enough time for the Urukai to arrive, and he might use the war chant here kinda defensively. Smoky is actually rushing down the creep. He wants to make sure to steal the creep. He's gonna get level almost 2. He was able to get the creep, but he's not gonna be able to get the money. The money goes actually to Mr. To Ave Ave, I mean. Which is, I think, the main purpose. Yes, the Lorien Warriors are almost level 2, but remember, Mr. Smok was forced to use the rallying call for that. Okay, we have the work pits now coming up. Um, after the Uruk pit, and he has one crossbowman, one Urukai, and one pikeman. The Lorien Warriors are hitting level 2, they are able actually to kill multiple pikemen. 
It looks like Ave Ave wants to go for the second creep, but the reinforcements are already coming from Mr. Smuck. They are definitely gonna fight for this creep, but the buff from Ave Ave will uh, remain longer than the buff from the Lorian Warriors because he was using the rallying call like 10 seconds before. And Mr. Smoke is gonna lose a couple of these uh, Lorian Arches and he will be forced to give up this creep. If he saves the Banner Carrier and he will be able to do that, that's actually really nice. Because this unit is gonna recover himself over time and the second creep this time and also the treasure once again secured by the Turkish player Avi Havi. Who didn't capture this in by the way at the bottom right side just yet. We have one more Lorian Warrior coming for attack, but they're gonna run into the warp packs here. They will be using the whole ability to take them down for defense. And I think that's even gonna be still a close fight. You can see the Lorian Warriors are still actually able to win the fight even against the buffed Warp Packs. Because Warp Packs are actually only good for harassment. They are not a great choice. They can win only against Orcs and against Goblin Warriors. They can't win against any other uh, Swordsman in the game. The power points collected for Isengard though, after creeping, after being able to kill the Lorian Warriors and we have also Lancers now on the field from Mr. Smog being used for harassment. They will be able to take down one of the Svernaces and the Warg Packs were kinda able to take down the Lorian Warriors, one of them is still remaining on the field but should need one, one hour actually to finish off the Svernace. Isengard now has a respectable army here. Uh, with the one Lorian warrior he has, he might be able to scout and see the positioning of the other furnaces potentially. And it looks like Isengard will go for a counter-attack now. Um, the great thing for Mr. Smog is the fact that he has almost enough power points collected for Kribane. Which is gonna be a very deciding thing when it comes to win those 1v1, I mean those team fights early on. The inn at the bottom right side will be captured by the Alvin player Mr. Smok. And we might see work packs against Rivandal Lancers, but Rivandal Lancers they should be able to win this fight. You can already see they are one-shotting them actually quite nicely. And Smok is going for an attack, he will be ignoring those Lancers for now. But he might be forced to make multiple pikemen, otherwise he will definitely end up losing multiple furnaces here. And there we go, Isengard is going for an attack. Rallying Call is available, but so is, um, I mean, Rallying Call is available, but so is Warchant. 450 command points for Isengard, 500 command points for Elves, and a big Warchant play is incoming. The Builder is gonna get away barely. We'll be trying to build a statue here, which is gonna take a while. Crossbowmen are taking down those Lorian Warriors quite fast, and there are no Warc Riders. Imagine he had Warc Riders here, because there are zero Pikemen on the field right now from Mr. Smug. If you would have Warc Riders, you can actually trample down those... Oh, nice trample here from Smokey actually, Kribane is being used for the debuff. And that's gonna make the Isengard army much, much stronger now. I mean, kinda, not directly because they are not getting buffed, but debuffing the enemy units is also kinda making your units stronger. But they have also the statue up now, which is not giving any leadership because of the Kribane. The Lancers, one of them is gonna be taken down, the second one is really badly damaged as well. The cave pads, they need to be careful, they might be getting shot down by this fortress. The fight is still going in the favor of Isengard and he was able to kill all the Lorian archers here. Another one is coming but he might lose them immediately as the crossbowmen are dealing a great amount of damage. There are still some Lancers on the field but he won't be able to commit. He will be definitely forced to wait for the second one coming from the stable. And during all this time Ave Havi is also creeping the work layer at the left side of the river. He has one pikeman here at the bottom right side. Might also go for the Rohan peasants and that's gonna be also the case. Work packs are trying to take down the wall hub, which is gonna take you a lot of time. It's one of the tankiest structures in the game. And smart move here from Ave Ave disengaging. And he will also be able to save this level almost 3 crossbowmen. There is another level almost 4 crossbowmen. Remember the maximum levels for normal units in Rise of the Witch King is level 5. Which is also gonna be also giving you um, the uh, fear resistance. When you are level 5 with a unit, you won't get affected by Horn of Gonza, by Cloudbreak and other stunning abilities like Roar ability from Drama Troll and the Screech from the Felbeast. 550 command points for Ave Ave and Smok, the Alvin player, has 560 command points collected. He's now going for the second barracks. He has still the stable up on the field. Will be using those Lancers for harassment, most likely. Isengard's player has collected 7.5 power points and Alvin player has only around 3. 
Oh, he's running into the bike, man. Oh, but he was actually lucky that he didn't die here. He might still lose one of the Lancers. He will be barely able to get away. He has a well here for the sustain. The level 2 Malon 3 is also quite low. He might lose that. The builder from Ave Havi is actually he's paying attention and will be barely able to get away. Chasing down the Lancers with your pikemen is a mistake in this current situation. And it looks like Smok is gonna use the second pathway, the, le the left side of the map, Lanes of Linden, to go for the second attack. Okay, he was able to deal with the units and he's gonna recapture this in at the bottom right side. And unlike Smog, when he was playing Isengard, Ave Havi is not going for the Sharku just yet. And the work bit is also only level 1. So no transition is being made just yet into anything. Oh, he has Sharku on the field, I take it back. Sharku is already on the field. We have a lot of archers here for defense. There is a statue in the back for the leadership. There is the well in the back for the sustain. Double Barak still only level 1. Isengard has almost 10, 10 power points collected, which might be used for either the Wildman of Dunland summon or for the Devastation. I would say Devastation would be overall the better choice. Because Devastation is actually a great choice against Elves in both cases. Once, it's gonna give you money. In insta money, not like a build up money, like for example from Industry or Field of Fires. Devastation is gonna give you instant resources. But not only that, you might also use it you will get rid out of the trees. And what are trees good for? Elven units are able to get stealthed around the trees. And you can you will deny that from happening by using devastation. Jarku is trying to cut off the way from the lancers. And Elven army is coming now. Warchan and Debuff are ready. You have 600 command points. He's gonna get lords on the field because I'm assuming that's the investment he was making. He's also going for the level 2 work bits now, finally. Warc riders are gonna be definitely needed. For harassment, they are stronger than the work packs, obviously. Elvin player has collected 6 power points. He might go for the foresight, or he will maybe save for 10 for the mist. And he has also Haldir now on the field. Haldir, a great hero overall, with the leadership with level 5, with the stun of the golden arrow with level 8. He might be able to do great work. It's gonna be very important for Ave Havi in this situation to not use the Kribin too early. Because if you use it early, the arch is gonna take it down in a second. You wanna make sure that your own units are tanking the damage. Maybe you can use it now. Okay. Or oh, imagine Warc Riders here, but Elven player has actually so many units on the field. Like, look his command points. His command points kept. 700 out of 700 command points under his control. The Lancers from Musmoki are doing a great job and that's a big army of Elves. Lourdes is finally on the field. Where is Sharku? Did Sharku die? No, Sharku is still here on level almost 4. He's gonna try to make it into the backline. The backline is kinda still not protected from Mr. Smog. We have now War Cribers joining the battlefield as well. Smog has to now be clumped with the units. He was able to kill some of those Lancers. Lourdes is disengaging. And Isengard's player is, be, is gonna be forced to retreat because he has not as many units on the field as the Elven player. Who has a great mix. He has Lorien Warriors and Pikemen for the tank. And he has a lot of Lorien Archers in the back. Wulka, thank you so much for the for the host, man. Appreciate that. And everyone, welcome to the stream, guys. Okay, Mist is gonna be used from Mr. Smok in the game number 4. We need to keep an eye on Sharku, but, but we can't see him. He's level 5 already. We know he's a one-man army. He can actually wipe out maybe the entire backline only by himself. That's why Smok is trying to focus him down and will be forcing him away. But Smog actually lost the fight regardless. He lost everything what he had, and even though he was kinda using the Mist, which has a longer cooldown than Warchan and Rallying Cole. The Archers are getting trampled down, Lourdes is almost level 3. Once he's level 4, Lourdes is a hero killer. So Haldir has to be very careful. He has also 10 power points collected now, which might be invested into the Wildman of Dunland. But Lords is off position and is gonna be... Oh, that's a mistake from Ave Ave. He was dominating this fight, but kinda inting there with Lords is a big mistake. This Malon tree at the bottom right side is just getting demolished. Um, I'm personally not a big fan of the Wildman of Dunland. Ooh, Sharko though, hitting like an absolute truck. Oh, but running the wrong way! What is Ave Ave doing with his heroes? 
losing two heroes after saving them quite nicely within 10 seconds and both Sharku and Lords are taken down. That's gonna give the Alvin player now enough time to get a bunch of Mirk Woods from this level 2 barracks. Level 2 barracks is under attack with only one pikeman, they're gonna need ages. And that's what I'm what I'm saying. It's, I'm not a big fan of this Wildman of Dunland. Because there are so many archers now with the leadership in the backside. But he's gonna try to commit on the level 2 barracks. And if he actually takes it down, it's a worth investment. Because Smog didn't manage to get any Mirkwoods on the field just yet. And keep in mind that the upgrade from level 1 to level 2 barracks costs you a thousand resources. So he's gonna... I think he's gonna be able to take down the barracks before it's gonna produce any Mirkwoods. And that's not bad at all. The Lancers are very badly damaged, so they can't uh, re-engage on the army. Oh, he has one Mirkwood. I, I, I'm blind. I take it back. We have also Glorfindel now joining the battlefield. Heal has been used, and Glorfindel is the same hero like, uh, like Sharku. He will get level 3 here within a second. But also Glorfindel has to avoid fighting those pikemen when he is mounted. When he is dismounted like this, the pikemen are not going to deal bonus damage to him. Uh, Avehave is saying, dude, I'm sweating my mouse. <laughs> of course, the pressure is real, and Avehave is 2-1 behind. He has to win this game. You have 700 command points for Isengard. 6 power points collected after Devastation, Wildman, Warchen, and Kribane. And we have 9 power points collected by Mr. Smog after Mist, Heal, and Rallying Coal. 910 command points available for the player from Ukraine. And he has 1 Mirkwood on the field. Ave Ave is gonna leave the game and the game is gonna be over 3-1 for Mr. Smok. He has to win only two more games to reach the Grand Finals. And by reaching the Grand Finals, he will be securing himself already at least $120, boys. Alright, boys, the game number 5 is all about to begin. Isengard against Goblins is the matchup. This time on the map, Jungles of Farhrad is the biggest Goblin map in the map pool of the World Championship. And Smok has clearly the advantage now. He has two more wins than the Turkish player Ave Hawe. And it's looking great for the world champion of 2019. As he's only two wins away from entering the grand finals. We have the red goblin player Ave Hawe from Turkey. Against the blue Isengard player Mr. Smok from Ukraine. Can I build a furnace into the second one? On this map you can also build more resource buildings at the beginning of the game. You don't need to make two resource buildings or one resource building into a production building. You can maybe make like three, four tunnels and go for a spider pit. Spider pit might be a great choice also on this map. Smog might go for the work pit as well. And he's gonna go for the clan setting actually after two furnaces. I mean we have seen this exact same matchup on the map at 10 Mors, which was the fastest game in this series so far, but Smok was playing the Goblin faction and Ave Havia was playing the Isengard faction in the in the game on the map Ethan Morris. And Spider Pit start with the Spiderlings was able to win the game in a second. But also Ave Havia was making a mistake by picking the Vision of Palantir from the spellbook. Okay, two furnaces, clan sitting into the third furnace. Two tunnels, spider pit into the third tunnel, I'm assuming he's waiting for the money. Need to wear gloves or something. He's sweating his hands. He's sweating his mouth. That's how excited and how much under pressure he is. Which makes sense because uh, this is one of the most deciding games in the tournament. Let's see how well the Spiderlings are going to perform against the Isengards, uh, Clan Sitting and Whiteman of Dunland. But we can already guess that the Uruk Pit, there we go. Uruk Pit is going to come up very, very fast anyway. And I think that's very necessary against Spiderlings as well. Because Spiderlings are, can actually win the 1v1 situation against the Wildman, yes. They can also be very good for harassment by taking down those furnaces very fast. But they are actually very weak against cr crossbowmen. So once, you have, once you have crossbowmen on the field, you should be easily able... Just don't fight them. Oh, okay, that was interesting. Smok is already using the Kribane, actually, to debuff the enemy Spiderlings. And Ave Habe will be using the Warchant, but that's a great... Look at the situation here. Look at the rocks. He's not able to attack. He needs to go all the way around. And he will now be forced to attack this one. But Smoke is body blocking this one as well with the Builder by building a wall hub. He might still be able to take down the Furnace. But with the Kribin being around, their damage output is going to be very much needed, uh, very much nerfed. They might still be able to take it down. But he will definitely, definitely lose the Battalion for that. 
He's gonna commit anyway, hoping that it, this is gonna be enough. I think it's not gonna be enough. The debuff from Kribane is coming in clutch, actually. It will save the, the... Oh, the last attack from the Spiderling. Not this time. The second one is also trying to take down the second furnace. He might be able to take it down. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be taken down, actually, this time. That's pretty nice. But they are not even buffed, so their damage output is gonna be nerfed now. Big time. Kribane is gone now. And this might be just enough. And very lucky situation here for Ave Have barely being able to take down those two furnaces means a lot in this matchup. We have to transition now into the first, into the second Goblin Cave. During all this time, he's also creeping the work layer with his third Spiderling Battalion. Expanding at the bottom left side quite nicely with those builders. And Isengard might go for a counter attack, but his debuff is on cooldown. He has Crossbowman now. And imagine, imagine just for a second. If Ave Have would make an early transition into the Spider Riders. There are no pikemen and this army is so vulnerable against, uh, against the crash damage from the Spider Riders. Let's see how much damage now Mr. Smoke is going to be able to deal. I mean the Wildman of Dunland, they are stronger than the Goblin Warriors in a 1v1 situation. And as long as he has crossbowmen in the backside being untouched, he might be able to kill multiple units. But those Wildman of Dunland, they are tricky. Whenever they're going to be able to attack your structures like this, they're going to steal money all the time from you. Plus one, plus one, as you can see, yourself. Also the commitment here, but the Goblin Warriors are coming out to protect this tunnel. He might be able to save the day, because he has more Goblins now. But that's a win-win situation for Smog. He doesn't have to take it down. Because as, soon as, as long as he's able to attack, and he's going to be able to take it down, he's stealing constantly money all the time from the Goblin player Avi Havi. And here's now Wildman all over the place. This tunnel here is gonna be taken down next. But Ave Have making a smart move demolishing that before he's gonna lose even more than the tunnel only. And Smog was also able to capture both the signal fires in the middle of the map. This one is gonna be coming up now, but never mind, the spiderlings are not gonna fight those Wildmen. They're gonna go for harassment once again. They have pikemen now on the field, but there are no crossbowmen for defense. So those two battalions with the Warchant, which should be ready now, can actually take down a lot. This, this um, tunnel, one of the tunnels has been taken down. The Builder has to run for his life. Another tunnel has been taken down here and here, obviously. We have 450 command points for Isengard, 400 command points for Goblins. He needs to expand more defensively, but because Smok is doing a great job scouting the area. And obviously those two signal fires in the middle of the map are helping out a lot. Because that's the vision control right now from Mr. Smog. He's able to see the middle area completely. I mean, you are obviously not able to see the corner here. And that's the way Ave Have might be able to expand. But yeah, he was also not using War Chance here, by the way, yet. On those spider links. He might try to commit on this almost level 2 furnace, but this one is greatly, nicely protected by those uh, um, stones on the ground. There are also pikemen around, which should be more than enough. And they are actually able to kill some of those spiderlings as they are running by. And yeah, Ave Have was not able to sneak any tunnels so far anywhere close to Mr. Smog. He has to make sure to make some more tunnels, maybe around the top side. Let's see. What's gonna happen? Because Smog is going for a big attack now. And this time he has also the Warchan and Debuff ready, unlike Ave Have. But he's also very close to get the cave pads ready. Which is going to be very much needed to defend such an attack. Smoke is fully committing with Warchan and Keith uh, Bats. Ave Have is going to lose the tunnel. He has now enough power points collected. He needs to invest them immediately into the Keith Bats. And that's going to be chosen and hopefully immediately used. That's going to be also the case now. During all this time, Spiderlings were able to get into the backline once again. The furnace is getting demolished by Mr. Smoke. He's making sure to not give any power points to his opponent. And even with the buff and debuff on those Goblin Warriors, Smok is gonna be still able to win the fight big time. Quality goes over quantity. He's not done yet. He's gonna go and potentially take down one of the production buildings and even the tunnel, which is level 2, in the backside. And yeah, this game is looking really great for Mr. Smok once again. The only great thing from Ave Ave is the harassment he's able to do with those Spiderlings. Taking down actually left and right furnaces all the time. But he has also, you know, he needs to make sure to also defend himself. 
Smog has also torch uh, purchased the torches, by the way. The second those Wildmen are able to touch a structure, you will be surprised how much damage they will be able to deal. They're gonna take down these tunnels and even the Goblin Caves within a second. And Smog is still alive with his units, but the buff and the debuff is gone now. Um, yeah, Ave Ave will be able to protect this area, but he lost, un you know, countless amount of Goblin Warriors for defense. And that was giving Mr. Smog just the time he needed to upgrade the clan setting to level 2 for the Extrovers. Yes, again a big army coming to the side of Ave Ave. Spiderlings are still able to, you know, kill some units left and right. Let's see what's gonna happen here, they are level 3. Extrovers are actually dealing decent amounts of damage to the Spiderlings, but it's a 1v2 situation after all. And they are gonna force the Spiderlings to retreat. Luckily, he will be able to save the level 2 battalion, but they are running into more extrovers here. Yeah? Oh yeah, close. Only was able to save 2 units from the battalion. But there are extrovers all around the place, and they will be able to chase and catch them actually, which is really nice from Mr. Smog here. All the spiderlings are gone now, and Ave Ave has barely any units on the field, and he's being attacked once again. And Mr. Smog, ladies and gentlemen, this guy is performing incredibly well. In this best of nine finals of the winner bracket. He's being everywhere. He knows how to play any matchup. And look at the expansion of, of Mr. Smog. He has units oh, left, story. right, top, middle, bottom, we behind, the front, everywhere. Three stinking days. Yeah. Why can't we have some meat? Morgomir is starving. And Phantom, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Okay, so this attack should be protected now by Avi Havi, but the problem is you don't want to be the one who is defending constantly as goblins against Isengard. You want to be the one who puts pressure and forces force your opponent to defend. And the last couple of minutes, oh, he's going to demolish the fortress anyway. And what a great and clean performance from Mr. Smog from Ukraine. Increasing his lead to 4-1 now. And he's only one win away, boys. One win away only from entering the Grand Finals. The game number 6 is all about to begin, boys. 4-1 for Mr. Smoke now. Ave Ave has to make sure to win this one. Otherwise, it's not going to be game over for Ave Ave, by the way. Even if he loses that, he's going to drop down to the finals of the loser's bracket. And if he wins the finals, he will get the chance to fight against Mr. Smoke one more time in the Grand Finals. But again, the winner of this game has such a big advantage in the Grand Finals because he will be undefeated until, until then. That's a double elimination tournament. The Smog, if he wins that series against Ave Havi, will have a second life, if this makes sense. Even if he loses the uh, Grand Finals one time, he will get the chance to play one more time best of nine. And he won't get defeated immediately. We have on the right side the blue Isengard player Mr. Smog from Ukraine against the red Elven player Ave Ave from Turkey. Two Malone trees into the third Malone tree this time. We see also the same actually here. Two tree furnaces Urukpit is building up. And that might be a stable delete potentially from the Elven player. But he might also just try... I think it's gonna be a stable delete. Yeah, it's gonna be a stable delete. Now he has enough money for the stables. And the stables is gonna come up here after three Malon trees. So I don't know about that one. Because even if you go for the Rivendell Lancers, they are only good when the opponent would start with clan setting. Because yeah, you might argue and say they are a great counter to the Urukai. You are not wrong, but they are not a great counter to them. Because you will need to trample them like eight times to take them down. And you have to commit to the defense. You need to defend yourself because you have no following up any soon. The, the way he's gonna play now, he's gonna make one Lancer, demolish the stable. And then he has to play with the Lancer very defensively, hoping that Mr. Smog is gonna start with Urukai. Which is luckily the case. But dealing with the Urukai is gonna give Smoky enough time to get Pikeman on the field. The Lancers, they won't be able to take down too much. But Smog is moving forward. And so far, Mr. Smog, when he was playing Isengard against Elves, was always doing the same thing. He was always going for Urukai and for early harassment. And every time, even the one game he lost, 
it was working out very nicely for Mr. Smug. Okay, lenses are coming now. He's not gonna demolish the stable, by the way. He's not demolishing the stable. I don't know what's happening here. He sees them now, he needs to retreat. And he will be retreating. Smog might still commit to that fight, by the way, with the Warchant and try to stall, try to keep the Lancers busy. If you use Warchant and Shield Wall whole ground stands, you will actually be tanking a lot of damage, but now it's too late. Nice flank damage, by the way, from the Lancers. Both players are not using the buff for that. So if Smog would have used the buff here, I think also Ave Havi would have used the buff. Okay. Nice, nice defense here from Ave Havi. He's gonna go for the barracks now, and he has two Lancers on the field and still keeps up his stable for now. We have not seen the transition lately that much into the Horse Archer Battalions from Elven Faction, but we might be able to see that maybe today. Okay, he's gonna go for the attack and might be using the war chant here. There are some pikemen in the front, but there are no pikemen here. This furnace is gonna get taken down first. Prosper men, they need to be very careful here. Smoke is paying attention. And because he has only one pikeman, he has to now make a choice. And actually, the second Lancer battalion is kind of paying off, paying out big time. Because he has only one pikeman, and now he has, he has to make the second one. If opponent has only one Lancer, you can, on, you can actually get away by making only one pikeman. And he might be losing this furnace here. It looks like he doesn't want to demolish that and try to kill as many units as possible. The pikemen are going to arrive. So he might... He's, they are also using the bombard ability, by the way, as you can see. The Lancers, they will not be only able to take down the Furnace, no, but they are also getting away. And during all this time, holy moly, these Lancers, I like this strategy from the Turkish player Ave Havi. They were able to take down three Furnaces with, with surviving. He was using Bombard here all the time. Such a great start into the game number five, but he into the game number six, I mean, but he needed that. He needs the advantage definitely in this game. Because if he loses that, the finals of the winner bracket is gonna be over and Smok is gonna move to the grand finals. Warchan is ready from Smokey still. It's gonna be potentially used for offensive purposes. The work pit has been actually cancelled and Smok now is gonna lose another furnace here. He's going for a potential base trade. He knows I need to deal damage otherwise I'm gonna lose the game. If archers at the forest, they are getting stealthed, they are getting invisible. But Smok is kind of giving up his own area, and he has only 250 command points collected. He has no units on the field for defensive purposes, and the furnace here once again might be taken down. But it looks like Ave Havi is gonna be is gonna say, "My work here is done, so let me go back and let me defend myself," which is easier said than done, because Smok has so many pikemen on the field. He has pikemen here with the Urukai, pikemen here with the crossbowmen. But these ones are not protected, the Lancers, they should be easily able to take them down. Smok might be even able to take down the stable, but I think that's not what he's aiming for. He wanna take down the eco and reduce his command points and his resource income. Smok has two furnaces, he's gonna go for one more pikeman, he needs them. Because the Lancers are doing a great job. Eating like an absolute truck, as Fiesta Mode said in the chat. The Malon tree is gonna get demolished. But the buff is not longer active, and now the counter-attack from Ave Havi might be devastating. But ladies and gentlemen, the game isn't over until it's over. We have Sharku joining the battlefield. Who's gonna make it to the finals? If is Smok gonna be able to come back from this current situation, which is being actually very bad for him right now? He knows Elven player doesn't have any pikemen, so he's gonna commit to that fight with Sharku. Now Elven player has to move, oh nice trample here. Splitting the army is always a great option, you don't want to be clumped against the Sharku. He also needs to be careful because overcommitment might be actually a big mistake. Oh, he's gonna lose a couple of these pikemen to the troll. Isengard, uh, Elven player was looking for some furnaces, but he has no furnaces around this area, this furnace in the backside will be taken down, there is no defense at all. He's creeping now the troll layer. He's trying to creep the troll layer. He's losing a lot of pikemen during this time. But I think he's still he should be still able to do it. Slowly but surely. He needs any form of resource income. And the treasure from the troll layer might be very helpful. 
Pikemen are coming now. Sharku is gonna be forced to retreat, but the archers here are, un are unprotected. Ave Ave is paying attention. He was also able to creep the work layer here at the top right side. But Smog actually was able to slow the game down a little, uh, little bit with Sharku's existent and present. The troll creep is gonna be secured by the Isengard's player, but Ave Ave is gonna say thank you very much. Let me grab the two parts of the treasure real quick, but he's gonna lose one of the lenses for that. Ave Ave, the thief of Middle Earth, is gonna build a well. Double barracks now, and he needs to, you know, maintain the pressure now. He needs, he, you know, he knows obviously Mr. Smog can't have too much on the field. So every second he's, he wastes, he wastes to not attack, Smog has a great potential to come back. And indeed he's gonna go for another creep here. Sharku is capturing the signal fire. We have now more units coming, he has built up three furnaces. He has still only 350 command points, but I but the man of the west, I mean the Elven player is also not much more ahead. He has almost 8 power points collected though. And because he has no army, there is no reason of you know of picking Kribain. Maybe he's gonna try to save for the 10. Because he needs money, he needs units on the field. Like either the Wildman, but also the Devastation might be a great choice in the current situation. We might see a Rallying Call play here, because Rallying Call is available, he's gonna go for the Creepane anyway. Elvin player has also collected 7 power points, the pikemen are creeping the second work layer at the bottom side. Smok is actually getting money left and right all the time. The furnace here is gonna be taken down by those Lorian warriors, they're also gonna hit level 2. Isengard player is building um, a ballista as a defensive expansion around the fortress. An Elvin army is stacking up here, a big army. But I think he will definitely still need the ends to finish off the game. Maybe he just kinda relies and hopes that Mr. Smok is gonna leave the game. But he guesses wrong, because let me tell you something about Mr. Smok. Mr. Smok is not giving up. Even when he has only one builder alive and the fortress is 1 HP, he is gonna fight until the end. So if you, if you hope that your opponent Mr. Smok is gonna call it GG any soon, you are wrong my friend Ave Ave, you need to do it yourself. We need to take down everything, including the fortress, to defeat Mr. Smog in this game. 695 command points available. The pikemen are gonna be potentially able to take down this Malon tree. There is absolutely zero defense around this area. Charku is fighting against the Lorian warriors. He's almost level 4. Level 7 will be the time for him to shine. 9 power points collected now almost. Oh, the command points are dropping, low, uh, dropping lower now as he loses one of the Malon trees. Charku is still a big threat, and that's why he needs to always keep the pikemen around his archers. And look at this, Smoke is getting more and more units on the field with only 350 command points. He has almost 6 power points collected, by the way. He might be able to take down this Malon tree here. Nice stacking, nice clumping. Very nice clumping here, and yes, he will be able to take it down. He will be losing the pikemen for that, they are almost level 4. They are running, they are just stalling, trying to kill as much time as possible. Because time and money, those two things are right now not existing for Mr. Smug. And I think that's a overkill here from Avi Havi. He doesn't need an investment into a battle tower. He doesn't need that. What he needs are ends. He needs to make ends as soon as possible and start to siege as fast as possible. That's what he needs. Charku is doing a great job left and right. Pikemen, they need to be avoided though. Um... Ave Ave is saying yeah in the chat. Just kill half of them. He was, I think, killing like a lot of pikemen maybe during the trample. He's getting away almost level 5. He has 10 power points collected now, but he needs to be careful. He's maybe running right in front, in, inside the army from Elven player. Mist is gonna be chosen um, for a potential fight. And I can't believe it, but Mr. Smog is still alive. He has 7 power points collected and Devastation actually might turn the game around. Because Sharku should never be underestimated. Entmur is finally up on the field and the siege will begin shortly. The Ents are gonna join the battlefield soon, but I think the Elven player has the problem of being command points kept. He needs to make more Malon trees in order to get this end on the field because it's stuck, you know, it's stuck now. Um, you, you need to make space for the Ents. And it's not gonna become better because he keeps losing this Malon trees all, all the time. But now the Malone trees around the fortress are hitting almost level 3, which is going to increase the command points you are getting from one Malone tree only to 100. 
And Smoke is doing a great harassment. He actually does more harassment right now than Ave Havi. Obviously, it's possible only because Smoke doesn't have too much on the field to defend at this point. Smoke has only these furnaces around the fortress, these four or five furnaces he has. That's all he got. That's why it's almost impossible. And because of the signal fire here, he's also able to see the Smallone trees, which is gonna give him a lot of vision control. Okay, the end is gonna be joining the battlefield very soon. He has to make sure to kill the Ballista expansion first. Maybe you can attack from this area and force him to make another one. They cost also 500 each, by the way. They are not cheap at all. 745 command points against Smok's only 525. But Smok is only one power point away from getting the Devastation unlocked. This, can, this game, as ironically as it sounds, can still go either way. I have seen Smok winning those games not only one time. And he is gonna actually... Force Avi Havi to make multiple mistakes for a great comeback potential. And he, you know, his army is also not shabby. He has Warchant, he has Cremain, he has 9 power points collected afterwards. He can go for the Whiteman of Dunland, which might be good in this current situation. Because the Lancers are not with the army. And as long as there are no Lancers, the Whiteman summon on top of the enemy arches with Warchant and debuff can be actually very significant. But he also has to react now very fast, because he needs to make sure to take down this end, either with the Ballista expansion or with his army, which is easier said than done. And what you always, what the, what you always need to do, I'm sorry, is that you need, you need to make sure to you know, switch to the aggressive stance, which is going to increase the range of the siege weapons around the fortress. Isengard will be able to defend his attack. The end is gonna finally start sieging the fortress. The second one is gonna be joining the battlefield soon as well. The Vestation has been picked. Charku is going around looking for a chance. Can this Ballista take down this end fast enough? That's the question. And they are both able to shoot him down actually. And yeah, the end has to be careful. Four shots are gonna be needed and the end is gonna be down. And those Ballista expansions are actually doing a great job. Defending. The Vestation should be used already by Mr. Smok, in my opinion. Because you should get it on cooldown. He's gonna use it, actually, right on, on top of that. Sharku is diving in. Sharku has to be very careful. Sharku is getting damage and will be taken down. Fully, but wrong commitment here from the player from Ukraine. Sharku is going down in a second to the pikeman. The Mist is coming in clutch for the debuff. Isengard over committing here. Might lose everything, but the ballistas are actually even able to hit those archers on the backside. They are getting more pikemen, but the crossbowmen in the meantime are unprotected. The end is getting raged, and he's gonna go for the fortress once again. There is only one ballista expansion, but two shots, and it's gonna be taken down. Isengard's economy is not looking great, and he has no more units. Smog might call it GG, but again, Smog likes to fight until the very end. And yeah, I mean, I need to say, even though Avi Havi will, able to win this, will be able to win this game, still a big respect to Mr. Smog, having such a, such a bad start, losing three furnaces, being so surprised of this two calf start from Avi Havi, which was unpredictable, yet he was able to stall for multiple minutes, for 15 minutes actually, which is quite impressive. We're gonna jump right into the game number 7. The score is now 4-2 for still Mr. Smok. Abe Habe has to make sure to win 3 more games in a row. The game number 7, this time on the map Holy in Edit. Isengard against Elves one more time. Abe Habe is gonna try to do it because he was only able to beat Mr. Smok twice and both the times he was able to win was with Elven Faction against Isengard. Let's see if he can do that once again. He has to if he wants to reach the Grand Finals. Let's get it started. We have the Blue Isengard player Mr. Smog from Ukraine against the Red Elven player Avi Havi from Turkey. With a surprise, surprise strategy in the previous game on the map Westfold. And this time he's gonna try something different. He's building a barracks immediately after the first Malon tree. On the other side we see two furnaces. I think Smok is gonna stick up to the original plan, two furnaces into the Uruk pit, but I might be wrong as well. Warchan has been chosen, and Rallying Call has been picked as well. 
Yeah, it's gonna be indeed two Uruk pits into the, I mean two furnaces into the Uruk pit. He's gonna build the third furnace immediately. And actually, he might now. Ave Ave has two different uh, options. He's gonna go for the option A, which is gonna be make Pikemen go for the creep, group them later on with the Lorian warriors, and go for the attack. He might also be going for the Lorian archers because now he has to figure out. He, you know, he needs to figure out by now that Smok is gonna go for the Pikemen, uh, for the Urukai potentially once again, and go for the attack. That's always a possibility, which we will see. He's gonna also go for the Pikemen, okay? He might go for the troll creep at the top right side though, but he might also go for the war creep at the right side in the middle. Let's see what uh, Ave Ave is planning to do with the first pikeman coming from the Varax now into the Lorian Warriors. I think that's gonna be the plan also from Mr. Smog. Pikeman and then Urukai afterwards. Go for the attack after the creep. And it looks like Ave Ave is going for the creep at the bottom left side. The troll layer is gonna be his target. And the pikemen are joining the battlefields now. They might go for... Let's see where they're gonna go. I'm actually curious. He's gonna go for the creep at the bottom right side. So with that being said, they might be actually running to, you know, into each other at some point. Depending on the on the speed of smog, of smog's creeping. Because technically... Oh, that's a bad creeping. Oh, that's unfortunate. If this happens to you, look, they are running away from the lair. Oh, that's Fiesta. That's gonna buy... That's gonna cost a mult. Oh, that's gonna. Oh no, 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 no. They were not only afraid from the troll, but they were actually running away. It was like a roar ability from the troll. And now, how much time he was wasting here? That's so unfortunate because Smog is almost done creeping already at the bottom right side. And Smog might be the one who contests the troll creep at the bottom right side as well. Let's see. He's gonna group now with the Urukai. The second, the the third one is gonna be those. Crossbow man for the for the defense. You have the one Lorian Archer Battalion already on the field. The second one is on his way. The creep is gonna be finally, finally secured by the Alvin player Ave Ave. And they will be walking into each other here. I mean now Ave Ave has to make a choice. Will he defend himself and move with the Lorian archers forward? To actually catch the army of Isengard before it arrives to this side of the map? Or will he ignore them and go for the attack instead? I would say the safer way in my book is deal with the army first because you have army advantage right now. You have warriors and pikemen, but you have also two archers in the backside. Deal with the army first and move forward afterwards because if you can support this army with archers, the crossbowmen all alone won't be enough to defend. You have already a work pit and upgrade into level 2 is incoming. Double barracks. Is coming up now he is not gonna make the transition into the stable okay he's running away now he was also using the buff kind of defensively on these archers they are getting more archers on the field they need to be careful here the pikemen when they are able to fight in melee form they can actually the builder from smog but smog is paying attention he's gonna try to take down the second furnace after taking down this one and smog is also gonna be able to take down the second malon tree Remember, he was able to destroy one of these at the bottom right side. That's the second one. Uh, Mari, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Okay, will he be able to take down the second furnace? The answer is no. That's a nice defense from Mr. Smog, but also the fact that Ave Ave was playing... Uh, Ave Ave was using his rallying call defensively, which means it was not available for the push. That's why he was only able to destroy one of the furnaces. And Smog was actually able to stall a lot of time here, which is impressive. But now he might be forced to retreat. Urukai are damaged now, as we are getting more and more uh, crossbowmen, I mean, archers on the field. Luckily for Ave Ave, he was able to see the work pits level 2. So he now has to calculate this. Oh, never mind. He micros very, very nicely. The um, Urukai, I mean, Smog has units now left and right once again. And in a situation like this, you don't want to be in as Ave Havi. The builder is trapped and it's going to be taken down as well. He's going to lose now two Malone trees and once again, Smog is untouched. Smog lost only one furnace, but he was able to kill three, four Malone trees by now from Ave Havi. But that's not, that's not even all because he is creeping at the same time. He's, he's getting more and more units on the field. Smog is playing very impressively in the finals, for sure. 
Okay, Urukai are fighting against the pikemen. In the porcupine formation, they are able to tank long enough for the archers to take them down. But during all this time, he, leave, he loses all the time. Malone trees left and right. He has only 350 command points against Mr. Smogs for 50. Five power points almost collected. I mean, power point wise, it's quite equal. And Isengard is preparing himself for a big attack now. And for this attack, War Chance might be available once again. And during the fight, he will for sure get the power points he needs for the Kribane. Um, there is no statue in the back, no well for the sustain. So I don't think that the man, uh, that the Alvin player will be able to handle this attack. But we shall see. We shall see. 500 command points for Eisen, 400 command points for Elves. We need to keep an eye on the power points. Yeah, the Elven player might go for the heal, but let's be honest, heal in a situation like this is by far not as useful. Oh, that's a bad trample from Smokey. That's a very bad trample from the Smokey, actually. Ribbon is gonna be used, Warchen is gonna be used, but he lost like all the Warcriders potentially here. He will be able to save one of them. He has to retreat, but they're only level one. And Isengard, unlike Mordor, for example, can't purchase the Banakiri upgrade from the Uruk pit. He needs to build the armory for that. Okay. That's why he's running it down once again. Elven player with that being said was able to sustain with the heal. And actually he will be able to defend himself now. Crossbowmen are forced to retreat. And during all this time we have also one more Urukai coming to take down this Malon tree at the top right side. So Elven player has to move all the time from left to right. From left to right. And I'm assuming it's a, just a matter of time, but we will see Sharku definitely on the field one more time here. So far, every time when we saw Smoke on Isengard against Elves, he always, always went for Sharku. And Urukai are even taking down multiple archers before going down. And Smoke is getting more and more power points, expanding more and more while being able to keep the, uh, keep the Malon trees. Keep killing the Malone trees left and right. I mean, the only two starting, uh, the, the only starting Malone tree here is in the front one. This one is level two. On the other side, Smog will have now two level two furnaces, even three level two furnaces. So he has three untouched level two furnaces, giving each of them seventy-five command points and also more resources, obviously, and being tankier and harder to take down. But also, Charku is now on the field, as we can see. He's building multiple furnaces at the bottom right side, and the Elven player has only one pikeman to take them down. He's now making the transition into the stable. Ave Havi is quite behind. 675 command points for Mr. Smog. 485 for the Turkish player Ave Havi. Can he do it though? Can he defend this attack without having any units around this area? He needs to make sure to actually retreat with the pikeman. Now he sees the work riders with Sharku. But it looks like you want to commit for an attack and want to wait for this for the next battalion of pike, pikemen potentially for defense. He's going back now. If also one pikeman looking for furnaces around the top right side, the furnace here level two might be taken down. But you can see yourself how long, how much time it's gonna take him to destroy it. Mist is not available yet. Obviously, he needs still three power points for that. That's a nice clumped army. I wish Sharku would be around this area. <laughs> And Isengard is actually being able to close the gap, close the distance, and going for a melee attack. Oh, Sharku, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what I mean. There is obviously no reason at all for you to attack with only one pikeman as a damage dealer. You won't be able to achieve anything. And Sharku is getting into the backline. Sharku is getting into the backline with the Valk Riders. He's getting focused down, but what's the matter? You can't kill him. He's quite resistant against arrows. Uh, especially against normal archers like Lorian archers, Milkwoods might be able to deal much more damage to him. But as a mounted hero, every mounted hero, by the way, is much more resistant against arrows. Because they are obviously much more vulnerable against pikemen. Luckily for the Alvin player, it's collected 10 power points now, which will be, I think, invested into the mist. It might be... Ooh, be careful here as well. Pikemen are able to attack, actually, Sharku. But he's even killing the pikemen here slowly but surely. Level 3 pikemen is gonna be taken down. 
Sharku will be able to get away and the Lancers are forced to retreat without being able to take down the Furnace. Okay. And Isengard is going now for a counter-attack and let me tell you that much. There is not much left for defense right now from Ave Have. He might potentially be able to get two archers on the field, but will this be enough? Maybe it can be enough because the debuff was already used and they will have the leadership here. Okay. Sharku is regenerating over time. Isengard's player has now 775 command points collected. The Vestition has been picked and used already. The builder from Ave Have this time is going to be able to get away. Nice and risky trample at the same time. But he's being able to get away now. And with that nice trample of this Revendal Lancers, he might be able to defend himself without losing any, anything else. Okay, we have the money of the Devastation. Invested in, uh, into Lords. So Lords is also on the field as the second hero. And unlike when Mr. Smog was playing the Elvin faction on the map Lins of Linden against the Isengard from Ave Have. Mr. Smog was also getting heroes on the field like um, like um, Haldir and also Glorfindel. But I need to say that this is not being the case from the Elven player Ave Have. He didn't get any heroes so far every time when he was playing against Isengard. I think that's the game number four in this matchup. And not a single time we have seen any hero from Elves so far. Mist is available for the next fight, but he is very low on command points. He has only 485 command points collected. 875 command points for the player from Ukraine, which is impressive. Okay, I take it back. Actually, the second I'm saying it, Haldir is joining the battlefield. But he's only level 1. It's gonna take him a lot of time to get the levels he needs for the leadership. I think Haldir level 8 is game-changing as well. Because, yeah, unlike Engmar faction, Isengard has fear resistant. But the only way to get that is getting Saruman level 5. Which is easier said than done, because Saruman is a big investment. And he's coming out level 1, you need to also level him up to level 5. I think that Golden Arrow from Haldir, but also Cloud Break, in those big army fights can be very effective. Bio Creek, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to this stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Thank you guys so much for being here. Okay, Isengard actually committing to that fight, which might be a mistake. Haldir is getting levels here and experience, as you can see. The fastest and easiest way to get experience is stay in clumped archers, because they will keep killing units all the time and you can share the experience. But nice trample here with the Warcriders, and Elven player is now forced to retreat. Even with the mist, he was losing the fight. Haldir is also getting damaged here. He is still two levels away from getting the leadership unlocked. And leadership is not as effective as we might think. Because during all these big battles, I think Isengard won't choose to fight when Kreebane is on cooldown. And when Kreebane is not on cooldown, when it's available, the leadership is going to get completely negated. So, um, one of the best abilities definitely, in my opinion, alongside with the Warchant and the Felwin from Engma. From the spellbook of 5 power point abilities from any faction. Okay. Debuff is very, very important, very, very effectful for Goblins and Isengard. Those two factions are able to get this unlocked with only 5 power points investment. After the Warchant and Kreebane, you have actually a huge power spike for these two factions, especially for Isengard, because Isengard units are in general much, much stronger than Goblins. Goblins might not be able to win the fight with Cave Pads and Warchant combination, but Isengard definitely does. Because Urukai are tanky anyway, and if you nerf the damage, especially the damage nerf from the from the Kribane in combination in com in combination with the uh, nullifying leadership effect is very very impactful. Charku is almost level six. Isengard has complete control of this map, as you can see. The map is definitely all blue. The builder here from Ave Ave, he's not paying attention, and the second builder this time in the game. Number 7 is going to be taken down from the Turkish player. The Lancers are being used for harassment. They might be able to get away here. Yes, he has 3 Lancers on the field. So now, you know, Smog has to be careful because they might be able to finish off multiple Furnaces. But it looks like he wants to just take the fight. Which might be a mistake because Kribane is on cooldown and the Elven player should not fight here. Just fight around this area. Here, you are strong. Barax is level 2 and the first Mirkwood is going to be joining the battlefield very soon. I think he's gonna wait for him. There is one level 3 Malon 3, Wildman on top of the archers, and the, uh, 
the Lancers are not in position. He's gonna use the Elvin Wood, by the way. Investing his 10 power points for that. Elvin Wood is giving you like a like a rallying call, 50% uh, damage and armor. But also on top of that, it gives you uh, fear resistant, which again against Isengard is not very effective. Uh, the only way he would be able to win this fight is when the Lancers would be around, because otherwise, if there are no Lancers, no Calf, the Wildman on, of Thunland summoning on top of the Archers is very effective. Or oh, there are just too many Pikemen. But he's able to kill the Crossbowmen at least, that's good. We are getting the first Mirkwood on the field now. Haldir um, has to be closer to the army, so he gets more experience. Oh, the Warcriders are coming. He needs to reposition the Pikeman as soon as possible. Will he be able to do that? Oh, nice trample regardless from Mr. Smog. Lourdes is level 4 now. Haldir has to be very careful, by the way. And the cripple will be used. Smog is paying attention and he's actually watching everything. The second he gets level 4, and it's impressive. Because it, it actually might look easy, but actually thinking about anything. My Lourdes is level 4. Let me use cripple. Let me do that. Let me cover that. Let me do this. A lot of multitasking is actually needed for this, and Charco has been taken down, I mean, Haldir has been taken down, the builder is running for his life, and what an incredible performance, definitely, from both the players. Ave Habe being the defensive person, being able to keep himself alive. Mirkwoods are demolishing the Isengard army, Lourdes level 5 unlocked, by the way, that's the power spike for Isengard army, that's not even... I mean, it's a huge power spike, because outside of the mist, which is which is a long cooldown, there is no way of nullifying the enemy leadership for the for the oh, he's losing all the lancers as well he's saying rest in peace you lost you may quit now definitely no need to waste time the trash talk is is real i mean still impressive because avi Havi, until a couple of months ago was actually a dedicated battle for middle earth 2 player but managed to get to the finals of the winner bracket and managed even to win two games against mr smug but the journey of Ave Havi is not ending here. He's gonna drop down to the finals of the loser's bracket. We have still a couple of games in the loser's bracket, by the way, guys. We will have tomorrow, um, or maybe even later today, a DJ Premium against Sauron. We will have also the games between Matty Smurks against Imperialis in the semi-finals of the loser's bracket. And the winner of these games have to fight and face against each other. And the winner of the final game of the loser bracket has to fight now against Ave Havi in the finals of the loser's bracket. And the winner now, the winner then has to fight against Mr. Smog, who is now in the grand finals and has secured himself a second life and also the minimum cash price of $120. Pretty nice, very fun series. Went to up to the game number 7 in the best of 9 series, boys. Pretty nice.